Marcelo Champagne was a man who had big dreams. And he told the brothers once that the Marist project was gonna to go to every diocese in the world. And that's really, I think, a call that we are trying to respond to today. I think when we look at the Marist mission that's alive throughout the world today, and we go back to Champagne's original dream of what he was looking for, you know, to be the opportunity to, to work with young people, to educate young people, um, and particularly the least favored. And if we look at today's world, in many of the places that we're serving, whether it be in Aleppo or some of the refugee camps we've served, the orphanages that we have, and you know, our work in Haiti, and so many, so many war-torn countries around this world, we are serving the least favored in every opportunity that we have. The Maris today are in 80 countries. Uh, there's about 3,500 brothers, 40,000 laymen and women involved in this mission, and they're touching the lives of almost three quarter of a million young people each year. Uh, to me, this is a movement that can change the world. Our mission in these indigenous areas is noble. Our charism is important. The young people we are educating around the world have no one else to turn to. And as Marist, it's an honor to teach them the life skills they'll need to better their lives. As Marist, we know no borders. Where there are young people in need, it's there our service is demanded. The work that's happening around the world, uh, around our Marist world, is pretty inspiring to me. I look at some of the things that are going on in Marist ministry in other countries of the world and I say to myself sometimes, you know, I've never known that reality. I've known the reality of school life, of, of some ministry towards people who are in need of supplies and food, but I've never known ministry in the midst of bombings, in the midst of uh, political oppression. And I wonder and ask, you know, could I do that? One of our main goals is to love children, to love them equally, regardless of what their circumstances certainly to help them to grow into, as what our founder would say, good Christians and good citizens, uh, young men and women who are interested in making a difference and not sitting by the sidelines of life. Hola, 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 va pajarito. Hola, 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 va pajarito. De hecho, sí, eh, tenemos el... The Marist mission here is a blessing. These young people would have no future if it weren't for the training they were getting. Local businesses come here to hire them. Without this training, they would enter adulthood as unhirable. Internationally, the amount of need which exists in the world of young people continues to grow. And so for the Marist world, the focus and mission of what we're about is to go to places where the needs of young people are very strong. So for us, we need to build in a sense of mission again, similar to what existed back in the revolution in France when Champagne started the Maris Brothers. I think it's a very big, big mission. Uh, and what's exciting to me as a layperson is that uh, I get to be a part of it, but also we get to expand that and uh, take that in, in new directions uh, from where the brothers, brothers have started because there's that many more people who are involved now. There's that many more eyes and hands, you know, contributing. And so the mission can be bigger than it was in it, maybe its original scope or in its original goal. Hello from Syria. Thank you to all my Maris brothers and sisters for helping us. When people think of volunteering, they think of really small countries um, that don't have a lot, and they think, wow, I need to go there, I need to help them and stuff, but even finding someone in your community or another group in like a neighboring town or something where you can go and volunteer, I think that's a, a big part of being Marist. I think one of the most important lessons I've learned from Champagne is that a single person can change the world, but he or she can't do it alone. It is important to me to carry the mayor's mission because I believe that's how we can make the world better. The spiritual vocation of like what the mayor's mission is is something that like resonates with me. It's one of those things that like kind of like I get up in the morning and kind of think about is like how can I do good in the world today? Like how can I bring good to the students around me? How can I 
use this platform, the school where I'm at, to try to make the world just that much more of a better place. Helping others is the one thing I really like to do. I've never been good in school, uh, you know, in science or math or something like that, but I felt like I had a, a real calling for a service. It's just grown to be such a central part of who I am that I think no matter where I go or where I end up, I would continue living this kind of lifestyle. For me, I always go back to the, uh, the famous quote about Marcelin Champagne, uh, about doing the ordinary things extraordinarily well. Um, it's the simple things in this world that really get us, uh, really truly you know, carry us. And I think that that charism, uh, that word charism for me is that. Uh, it's just doing the simple things, doing, doing good quietly, um, because I know it's the right thing to do. As Maris, as we look to the future, we are very, very conscious that it's a very small world and that everyone is our brother, everyone is our sister. Whether we're going to be teachers in a school or whether we're going to be working more in social service type things, um, or whether we're going to be working with victims of tragedy, or the specifics will change depending on what happens in the world. But I think there definitely is a, a movement to be more global and more inclusive. Because of the way culture wars have been fought, there's a lot of people who forget that our God is a loving God, and we need to be living reminders that God loves all, uh, whether we're reminding somebody that God loves the others also, or reminding people that yes, God loves you. I am so grateful for our association with Amaris here in my village. Things have been so hard here, but thanks to them, I have great hope for the future. We would be lost without them. As being Maris brothers, we're not hierarchical. Our whole essence is about creating community, men and women, young people and older people, older brothers that can mentor younger people, young brothers now that are, know one another from around the world. The vision is exploding, and I think it's just a very exciting time. As we move into this third century, you know, the next hundred years, um, I think there's going to be new ways of living as Marist. We have the Marist brothers who have, for the last 200 years, carried on Champagne's dream. And there's a real movement of the Holy Spirit that will make uh, the next century a century of brothers and lay people in communion together with each other, continuing to go to every diocese in the world. Marston had a phrase I love, he used to say, there are good children and children who are not yet good. Children who might be difficult are the kids that a lot of people don't pay attention to and that as we move into a third century, we really make, need to make sure that these kids are front and center in what we're going to do. The calling may be different in terms of what we're actually doing to help the young and the most neglected. They may be, we may need to be working on the streets, we, na we may need to be working in prisons, we may need to be establishing more youth groups in areas. I think at times our world can be a scary place especially for our young people. I think um, our moment in history right now beckons us towards the future, not to look back and just think of the good old days, but to look forward and to, to walk into the third century of Maris life the same way Marcelin did, reading the signs of the times, dreaming of a better world, and focusing on the young people who can make it a better world. The younger community, I think we're really growing and I love to see that. I love to see people really getting involved with encounters and volunteering and stuff and I just want that to continue to grow because I think together we can do amazing things. My dear brothers, mis amigos, mis hermanos queridos, it's time to move. We can't rest on our laurels. We've had a great 200 years, but now we have a new century of opportunity. So may the Lord and our good mother get us through it and bring us some new adventures that we're gonna really celebrate. I think as I dream to the future, I just wonder what would Champagne say today if he was with us? Wouldn't he be just incredibly grateful that his dream has come as far as it has? 
that we're continuing to serve young people in so many incredible ways, he wouldn't be worried about what's the future going to be. He would know it's going to happen because each of us, each of you, and each of the men and women and young people around this world who love and adapt to our mission are going to make sure it happens. Champagne would be grateful. Champagne is grateful. And I think Champagne will be grateful for many, many more years to come. <laughs>